بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شفل الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم dear brothers and sisters welcome and a warm welcome to inspired Islam alhamdulillah just like the other episode we have an amazing guest in our show tonight alhamdulillah I'm so grateful to um, welcome one of our sister mashallah done her shahada one and a half years ago and uh, she's from Hungary and um, her name is um, Nuran. Did I say it right? Yes, perfect. Mashallah. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Sorry. I'm so grateful that um, you accepted my invitation. It's not easy sometimes to share your personal um, stories and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure, inshallah, whatever we're going to say, this will benefit the Ummah and inshallah benefit others to link with the Creator. If you could tell your full name to our viewers and um, how you are uh, inspired to this Islam. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Nuran Hamouda and um, as the brother said, I took my shahada um, one and a half years ago. Um, before that, I had um, a big research before because I find myself a um, quite objective person. So I needed the proof. Um, um, sounds a bit silly, but I needed the proof that this religion is the true true faith and the true, true religion and alhamdulillah I found my answers, I find my proofs and, um, and here I am after a few years later, um, alhamdulillah a practicing Muslim, praying five times a day, um, fasting during Ramadan, um, going to uh, mosques every, uh, mosque every week, Subhanallah. Um, I'm helping out in the Islamic Awareness Project in Istanbul Mosque and um, helping new sisters um, to, to um, develop their faith and, um, and teaching them how to pray or all the, the practical benefits. MashaAllah, so what do you do daytime? What kind of work do you do? Uh, I'm a nanny. MashaAllah, so that's another, another beautiful concept. Yes, you, you, I love you, this. MashaAllah, that's great. It shows your personality when you especially become a nanny and all that stuff. Um, so you were born in, um, where were you born? Or you oh yes, um, um, yes I'm, I'm, I'm a mixture, so um, I'm half Egyptian and half Hungarian. Um, my dad uh, was Egyptian and my mum is Hungarian. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't raised as a Muslim. Um, my dad unfortunately wasn't uh, a fully practicing Muslim. Although I always knew about Islam and as be because I was I was raised in Hungary, I always knew about Christianity, um, but it never really occurred in our life. Um, of um, I can't say either that we were we were non-believers because we've always believed in something. My mom always always told us that there is uh, there is fate and there's like Qadr, which which is really. Um, uh, similar to Islam as well. We, we find Qadr in Islam as was well. Was it difficult for you because you had a parents? Uh, one is um, from background is Christianity and one from Muslim. So you're in the middle. Who do you choose to go towards? So was it difficult for you to uh, bring How was it for you? Was it? It was, it, it was or difficult. For you, okay, forget it. Both have, they're different. They have the. I always had I questions. I've, I've always been a curious child. So I've always had questions. And um, especially my dad uh, explained to me that there is only one God and, 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 it's, uh, and Christians and Muslims have different views. But silly, silly me, like silly young Naran, <laughs> always thought <laughs> that uh, there's two gods because I've, I've, so always, I've always been in harmony. So I thought that, you know, Muslims has that, their own God and Christians has their own God. So everybody could live happily <laughs> next to each other and everybody could be happy. But um, of course, as I, as I was growing up and uh, as a teenager, I was facing loads of difficulties. And I was, um, I just remember I was always praying. I was always praying to God. I was always making to, dua. To, to which one? Just to one. Okay. Just okay. to one. I always, I always so record to, he. In your head, would you have to choose like my mother's one, like you said, if, if there's two there, so I could choose my other one today and the father. Do, do you have this in your, com 
No, Never. Okay. not not really. I had images, to be honest, because of you know the Christian background. The the Christian Christians has loads of images about uh, Jesus, and that it makes makes them okay. makes their Lord. So I always kind of had like images, like probably the Muslim God looks like this. Oh, actually, the Muslim God doesn't really have. I didn't really have a picture of him because. I what couldn't relate it yeah. anything to anything, but then the the Christian has like always had these pictures in the churches or anything. But when I when I when I was like you know I was in my final exams or you know like the teenage teenage difficulties, my best friend doesn't want to talk to me. I was always praying for one God, like please help me. Or if and I was always offering him something like if you do this to me, I'll be I'll be better. Subhanallah, that's brilliant. Okay, when you done your shahada, um, how old were you then? Uh, 27. Subhanallah. So it's just a pick of uh, everyone's life actually at that time. Did you thought that when you do your shahada, you're going to lose some of your family members, your friends? And did that come into your head? I'm doing shahada. From tomorrow, I can't do lots of things. Yes. And I was I did you go through that? Yes, I was really worried about my family. and um, But I, I, I thought that my mom used to live in Egypt for seven years and my brother was born there. So my mom was socializing loads with my Muslim family back there. So I thought that it, it shouldn't be so hard, but I was really nervous. SubhanAllah, the moment I started practicing, it was two years ago in Ramadan and she came to visit me and I didn't tell her anything because I, I thought that it's going to be better if she, if she sees me that actually I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I haven't changed. I'm just, I'm just fasting. So she came and I was fasting and she was really nice. She was she was staying cool. She was she was she was staying quiet. She supported me. And then I was like, oh, if I'm fasting that I should start praying as well. So that was another thing to tell her to, OK, mom, I have to go now because it's praying time. So just stay here. And I remember we were in a shopping mall. So uh, there's a praying hall in the, in the shopping mall. So I just quickly uh, went to pray and came back and I could see her being nervous, but she really wanted to su be supported. But then after she couldn't hold it, so we had a massive argument, like why I needed it, and and it's quite hard with her because because of the seven years she lived in Egypt, she has a specific view, view on Muslims, like particularly like Egyptian Muslims, how Muslim lived there in Egypt back then, thirty years ago. So um, so it's been challenging with her um, right now as well, but uh, Alhamdulillah she's. She's trying to be I, as supportive. Was she, was she being treated badly when she was? No. Egypt? But how did she get this idea that Muslims are? She like she's this? got this. She's got these ideas. Unfortunately, that um, um, it's it's kind of just like fake, and and women ah. are oppressed, and um, and they don't have a free will, and and. Um, and it's not because she was treated that bad, because she, she was a Christian in my Muslim, Muslim family there and everybody loved her. And of course, you know, when the back, back there 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, um, when, when, when a European go, goes, to, uh, goes to Egypt, there is something new, something fresh. Mm. So they treated her like quite, kind of like a queen. Okay. So she, they liked her being different and she liked being different there, um, which which made her a sense that, okay, so I can live like this. I don't have to be Muslims. Yeah. I don't have to be a Muslim just to fit in the family. And then she thinks that I want to fit in my society here in London. And that's why I, want, that's why, um, that's why I became a so Muslim. So you live in Egypt as well. Do you see uh, the people of Egypt, I'm talking about sisters because you're a sister yourself. And um, do you see the people that mix the culture with religion that gives them the really bad, bad, uh, bad uh, seeing the Islam because like you said, people don't have enough, free, especially women don't have enough freedom. You know, women don't have um, education way also they less than the men's. Yes. Um, I don't know if they could choose their partners in, in all cases, I'm sure not. So actually somehow the culture overtook the religion. So yes. now you're a Muslim, how do you see those two things bringing together? How do you? I do see in Egypt as well, um, I can only speak about my family because this is what I know and what I witnessed. But um, um, so in my family, all the women were studying something, Mashallah. but uh, not for the sake of using it. That was just a high status. Just, just, the, just This is just for the status to, okay, they are teachers, they are, um, I don't know, engineer, they, they, I've got doctors, uh, aunties and stuff. But then at the end of the day, they didn't use it. So um, 
they had the freedom to study whatever they wanted, but they were in a high um, uh, protection by their dads or by their husbands, and um, and they and they just became like a, a um, how to say uh, like a, a family. Fa fa family. But do you think, as we as a man, I'm, I'm just imagine I'm your brother. Do you think I'm I'm using as a uh, the abusing my power just to control the my mother or sister who was in the home do you think I'm, uh, do you think we're doing that no i don't think so i don't i, I don't think so. you shouldn't be because islam doesn't allow you to do this no thing. it's they not they need to have their own freedom they need exactly. to have their own choice exactly and ex exactly so so yeah so women women has the rights to study the women has of the course. rights to 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 socialize with other women like in islanda mosque as well we have this massive mariam center and then we go there just to just to enjoy our each other each other's company and um m muslim women uh has the right to work and uh of course with the condition to to be course, to yeah. to be able to fulfill their their um uh, obligations towards the family of course, yeah. um so i don't think i don't think i've never looked at islam even even before I became Muslim. I never looked at Islam as an oppressed uh, um, uh, religion, or if I can yeah, say that. Yeah, I think uh, um, what I'm from. I'm from a part of the Asia. Um, in that culture, we don't have many women scholars, Islamic scholars. But if you go back to the time of the Prophet's time and after that, they had, we had plenty of women scholars. The yes. first university in the world is by women. Exactly. In Morocco. And also one of the one of the famous and um, most uh, important uh, scholar yeah. is his wife Aisha yeah. Radio. So Anand. we see the balance there. At the moment in the uni uh, universally we don't have that balance in any religion now. The men are actually deciding lots of uh, uh, explanation of the Quran and the hadith. And how about those, uh, our woman's side to it? So I think these days are in balance at the moment. A um, lot of mosque that uh, the women can't go to it. They're saying they don't have enough space. Yes. Subhanallah, we need to find a way. The Prophet's mosque was balanced, men and women together. Exactly. And he said, don't stop them if they want to come to it. Exactly. Don't stop them. That's the rule. But he said it's better to pray at home for women because it's difficult now in the morning. Can you imagine five o'clock now in the morning? Yes. And almost like if it's a late, it's 11 o'clock at night. Could they have family things? Quite relaxed for them. Yes. For the men's no, but for the women is relaxed. So it's quite balanced here. Um, can I ask you the life before Muslim and now? What the difference do you see within yourself? Oh, there is loads. Um, <laughs> there is loads. Um, I used to be. I used to be a really um, hyperactive person. I still kind of am, but with a with a balance, with a moderate balance. And um, um, I used to. I used. To, I used to have loads of friends, like loads of male friends as well. And now it's reduced, of course, um, because because of the Islam teachings. That so I don't get too casual with my male mm. friends. Uh, as as I used to be, I'm just saying. Then um, is it better? Uh, I can see, I can see, I can see the good side of it okay. because there was loads of temptations uh, uh, in in these relationships, um, and and I don't think now I don't think that men and women should should um, should how to say should uh, how to how to say it nice should. Um, should be a boundary or uh, yeah, should, should it should be a boundary. Like I, 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 I'm that kind of person. Like okay. I, I, it's not, it's not, it's not a problem for me to speak to a man, uh, but within of course vi within the uh, within the boundaries. Of course, yes, course. because because yeah, there could be loads of temptations, not just physically, but like but the, the views, how men look at different subjects and men and women uh, look at different subjects. Um, what else changed? Um, yeah, my temper, definitely. My, <laughs> my temper, temper changed. I'm more calm. I, I think twice. Or how did, ten how did times. you get this one done? Because <laughs> we need that, especially men. Yeah, get the yes, temper we down. all need so. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because um, because of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I, I take him as an example. Allahu Akbar. Um, and I think everybody should do that. And then he was the most gentle and most kind uh, of human being in our lifetime. And um, and then and, and and it's better. It, it's better to see. And also also the injustice I've always faced with in my life. Like imagine me, uh, a, a little uh, Arabic person uh, in 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 a school with just white people. I got I faced loads of injustice in my life. So um, I was always fighting against it. 
But now with Islam, I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees me and he knows. He knows what I'm, I go through and, and, and who, he knows who's right and wrong. So I just leave it to him. Subhanallah. So I just don't, I, I, start, I, I try, I try not to get involved in, in, um, in uh, debate, de debate. Debate. Debate, okay. yes. Okay, if I could ask you, but when, but it was a crunching time when you decided to do your shahada. So what, what you read Quran and um, you decided that no, this can't be man word. No. no one would know 1400 years ago this kind of information. Yes. There's no way. It has to be something from beyond. It has to be divine. Yes. And um, what were the things that clicked in your head? I said, no, that's it. Can you imagine you give up lots of things, you know? Yes. You give up lots of things. So if you could tell me, do you remember them? Yes, I do. Uh, when, I was, when, I, when I first read the Quran, it was, I, I must say, it was quite quick. Quite quick. I read the Quran in two weeks, but I just read it as whole thing. the whole, whole thing, thing because, but it wasn't, it wasn't deep enough. I just read it as a book. I want to know what it is, what it is. And then, um, and then I started listening to lectures uh, uh, online and it brought up, uh, so like different scholars brought up different um, signs in the Quran, what, 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 what points out. Uh, that it could be uh, a human word, such as uh, when in Surah Al-Rahman, Rahman, when um, the the sweet sea, the sweet water, and the salty water ah, can't they can't don't, they uh, the final line. You don't see exactly. it exactly. Mm -hmm. And I googled it. I, of, of course, I checked it in the Quran. If, if it's really written, it's written. <laughs> then I googled it, and then and then and then I realized yes, that. I truly remember the, how Quran states the, the mountains as the, stab the stabilizer of the so earth. And I clearly remember uh, uh, I was, uh, my, my teacher saying this to me when I was like 13 years old. I was in seventh grade, I remember. And uh, he, was, he was saying about the, about the roots of the, of the, uh, of the mountains. And, and also it just generally started, made, made me start thinking of, of, of very, very, um, uh, uh, how to say like normal things like the sun, the cloud, the the, the trees, and 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 how 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 they are a sign like the like the sun sun comes after the moon and and there is like a divine uh, divine circle in it and how the Quran beautifully even me not speaking Arabic unfortunately, um, but like even even with the English translation it was so nice how it was how it how it was written down so. That, that, that I, I, just, I, just, I just decided, decided that yeah. I was Especially convinced. Especially there is a line in Quran that talks about the expansion of the universe. Yes, exactly. We recently know now that, well, that it's expanding all the time. Yes. And uh, um, the Prophet Muhammad would, that time would, no one would know. Mm. No, that no, time no, no one, human will know. No one would know. So this is not a, the human word or the Prophet Muhammad himself. That's not his word. Yes. His words are in, in the Hadith. So this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. divine and we can see it. Yes. You know, on, over and over again. Yes, and loads of things. Like there's lo 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 loads of non-Muslims who's, who's coming to our open days and asking about fasting. Why would you do that? Why would you do that for 22 hours? And then, and, and I, only can, well, I only can say that because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to me, first, first of all. And then if I want to reason with them, is that I can, I can bring them proof from nowadays that many, many uh, fashion bloggers and, oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't know who's leading this, this part of life now, but they do the fasting. They, they, there is actually a, uh, uh, um, a diet called if is that they don't eat for certain hours and, and it's beneficial. And also, also there is the other, other diet, which is the three to two diet when uh, two days you don't eat and three days you eat, which is again, which is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Um, so there are, there are many, many, many uh, scientific uh, proofs uh, in the Quran, but um, and as I said, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a quite objective person. I've always been, so this is what brought me closer to the Quran and to to Islam. And then, and then, when y what my experience is, if you if you sincere, then the 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 spiritual uh, feeling is it will come. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bring it to you. Okay, remind me of spiritual. Um, you know when you pray. Um, um, Especially, I met lots of new Muslim brothers and sisters. Actually, they, they, their experience of life, especially spiritually, is totally different than the ones of most of us uh, born as a Muslim. We don't actually look for the differences. Yeah. 
um, do you had untold or I mean experience that you can share it with our viewers that you think is only can done by God like I met a friend and so he wanted to do he saw a cat before the Shahada he saw the cat and in his mind he was he wanted to do something but he looked at the cat and he saw this cat is trying to show him something and actually he this cat itself led him to the Shahada okay so do oh, you guys do you get do you have anything in, in, in to share with us anything like this yes that's quite personal um, so so how I started so I had my research and I found it true and um, and I still had the fight in me that well, you know what my mom always said about Islam and what I recently experienced I still have this big fight in me and um, and I was just I remember before I went to sleep uh, I did my wudu because this is what I always did I, I, I did wudu I wasn't praying that time I did wudu did my uh, my big bath like my ghusl on Fridays and I did make du'as intentionally but I did make du'as especially on Fridays still no fasting no no praying and then one day I went to sleep and I was thinking that oh I wish my dad was alive and then he could advise me because he wasn't because this is how I, how, how I was feeling he wasn't practicing so that time I was thinking oh okay he wasn't really like Muslim because he wasn't practicing but still he knows he knows loads about Islam so I, I wish I wish he was born uh, he, I, I wish he was alive and I had a dream and um, and I still remember like like clearly remember that um, that it was kind of like a message that yes that's true that's true what you're going through you just so you just have to you just have to accept it and what was what what, what was what what yes so yeah so subhanallah so sister i want to uh, thank you for time with us thank you in in let's finish in that good note in the um you actually um your in the you know, your dad actually came to you in your dream actually telling you actually satisfying that what you is going through is it's that's amazing who else can be than the peer parents that come in your dreams and shows you and especially you've been through the difficulties and easy as well so we pray for your dad may allah uh, bless him and give him jannatul firdaus mm -hmm. also pray for your family that may allah bless them and uh, make easy life for them and make easy for everyone who are watching us around the uh, world that we learn so much stuff from uh, our sister subhanallah we all going through this kind of emotional things but if we can relate ourselves to the creator the, the maker of the universe inshallah this will benefit us here and hereafter so i want to thank you first and please make for dua for everybody's watching yes um I, all i can say that um or may allah guide all of you who's watching and um i find the sweetness of the iman how he did to me as well mashallah khair, brothers and sisters for being with us may allah bless you may allah bless your family and if you said anything wrong do forgive us and um, keep us in your dua wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh